Happy New Year, everybody. As we enter 2023, I hope and I pray that it's going to be a really good year for all of us. And welcome to South Berlin Baptist Church and this, our New Year Pause for Thought special. If you're just joining us for the first time, you are so welcome. If you're one of our regulars, fantastic to have you back. We're going to have a little thought or two about what this new year might hold for all of us and how, with God's help, can we begin to handle that. As we begin our time together, let me lead you in a prayer. Living God, once more we stand on the threshold of another year, at the end of an old chapter and the beginning of a new one. We come to recall all you have done and look forward to all that you shall yet do. We thank you for everything this past year has brought us, the fun, the friendship, the lessons, the obstacles that we've had to overcome, the dreams realised. But we ask, as we enter 2023, for your help in everything that the new year holds. All the challenges we shall face, the opportunities we shall glimpse, the initiatives we shall begin, the successes we shall achieve, and of course the disappointments we will have to endure. Lord, in all things, be with us and guide us, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'd like us to get straight on and start to think about the new year and how we can have more faith and attempt greater things for God in 2023. But before we look to the future, let's just remind ourselves of some of the key things that have happened in 2022. Number nine, UK Prime Minister shakeup. In the years following Brexit, the United Kingdom has grappled with a multitude of changes. This includes a revolving door of prime ministers, which continued with Boris Johnson and Liz Truss in 2022. Johnson would spend the bulk of his term dealing with the pandemic. After his administration was caught having parties that violated health regulations, he resigned. And I will be leaving, Mr. Speaker. I will be leaving soon with my head held high. This led Trust to take over, but she didn't last long either. Less than two months later, she stepped down after a proposed budget led to financial instability in UK markets. I recognise though, given the situation, I cannot deliver the mandate on which I was elected by the Conservative Party. I have therefore spoken to His Majesty the King to notify him that I am resigning as leader of the Conservative Party. Rishi Sunak took over from there, filling the vacancy at 10 Downing Street as the third prime minister of 2022. Number four, Massa Amini protests. In September, the death of 22-year-old Iranian woman Massa Amini ignited the biggest protests in Iran in over a decade. Iran's religious morality police had arrested her for allegedly not wearing her hijab properly. Eyewitnesses report that she was beaten to death, and leaked medical scans support this. In response, thousands have taken to the streets in protest, with many women removing their hijabs in defiance. But extraordinary acts of defiance are now taking place against a regime that's controlled what half the population wears and how they all behave for so long. The Iranian authorities have blamed Amini's death on a sudden heart attack and cracked down violently on protesters. Iranian authorities denying accusations that Amini suffered blows to the head during her arrest, saying it was a heart ailment that killed her. But her family disputes that claim, as do the thousands of Iranian women taking to the streets. Thousands have been detained and several hundred killed. With the changing cultural and political norms in the country, these demonstrations are changing the course of Iranian history. They've been accused by Iran's clerics of being dreamers, for believing in change. But there's determination here. Number two, the death of Queen Elizabeth II. The BBC is interrupting its normal programmes to bring you an important announcement. This is BBC News from London. Buckingham Palace has announced the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. After a record-breaking reign of 70 years, Queen Elizabeth II died in September of 2022. She took over the throne from her father, George VI, in 1952, during a period of rebuilding for the United Kingdom. 
The British royal was arguably the last consequential monarch, hearkening back to a time where nobility was more than tabloid fodder. As queen, Elizabeth worked with more than a dozen prime ministers, beginning with Winston Churchill, and she also met with 13 American presidents. She gave me a look that only a mother could give a child. Her death marked the end of an extended era in modern history, including the softening of the British Empire. Her passing provoked many different reactions, including tearful tributes, indifference, and criticism. Historically speaking, Elizabeth II's death was the most notable passing of the year. Her death comes after the passing of her husband, Prince Philip, last year. And her passing sets the stage for Prince Charles. Number one, Russia invades Ukraine. As Ukraine has pulled away from Russian influence, Russia's president, Vladimir Putin, has reacted with furious violence. In 2014, protests in Ukraine forced the removal of pro-Russian President Viktor Yanukovych, widely viewed as corrupt. In retaliation, Russia annexed Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula. After demanding that NATO ban Ukraine from ever joining, Russia launched a full-scale invasion in February 2022. Within minutes, explosions were reported in numerous places, including the southern port cities of Odessa and Mariupol, as well as Kramatorsk and Kharkiv in the east, the Dnipro in central Ukraine, and the capital, Kiev. At home, Russians were told this was a, quote, special military operation to, quote, denazify Ukraine. The invasion has not gone as planned. Ukrainian President Zelensky has proven a resilient and unifying leader, and Western arms have helped his forces turn the tide in key territories. Do not panic. We are strong. We are ready for everything, and we will defeat everyone, because we are Ukraine. Glory to Ukraine. Nonetheless, Putin's aggression has shaken the world economy, leading to massive food shortages and left tens of thousands dead. The war in Ukraine threatens to turn crisis into catastrophe for hundreds of millions globally who depend on its grain. Last year, its grain exports fed 400 million people worldwide. Stand in faith. Stand in faith, even when you can't see your way. Stand in faith, even when you feel like you can't face another day. Stand in faith, even when the tears want to flow from your eyes. Stand in faith knowing that our God will always provide. Stand in faith, even when you feel that all hope is gone. Stand in faith, knowing that he is always there for you to lean on. Stand in faith, even when you feel like giving up, because he is there saying, just look up. Stand in faith, even in those times you feel so all alone. Stand in faith, hold on and be strong, for he's still on the throne. Stand in faith, even when it's hard to believe. Stand in faith, knowing that he can change your situation suddenly. Stand in faith, even in those times you feel it's hard to pray. Stand in faith and believe that he has already made the way. When you look at the kind of news headlines that we've just looked at, and of course loads of others beside, they're going on at the moment of strikes, of the cost of living crisis, heating costs, um, you know, people with, suffering with NHS waiting lists and so on. It can be very easy to look at those kind of things and feel very hopeless, very despondent and discouraged as we enter a new year. And of course that in turn means it's often very hard to show great faith in God and to take risks for God because we just feel everything so uncertain and unsure. So I really want us to think now about what it takes to have a new faith for a new year. Bob applied for a promotion at work and he argued that he was the best applicant because he had 20 years experience. And Bob was absolutely stunned when his director disagreed with him saying, you don't have 20 years experience, Bob. You have one year's experience repeated 20 times. And that's a really important point, isn't it? You know, sadly, that can also be true for us where our spiritual journey is concerned. The reality is if we are going to keep moving forward in our faith in 2023, then we are going to have to listen to what God is telling us to do. And then we're gonna to have to really make a decision to do it, however scary it might seem, and then we need to step out in faith. And I love hearing about those who have stepped out in faith. And of course, the Bible is filled with such stories. 
Abraham stepped out in faith when God commanded him to leave his home, his country, his family, his father's house, and go to a place that Abraham had never been to before. But God said that he would bless him there. David, King David, stepped out in faith much earlier on in his life when he faced a giant named Goliath. Everyone else was terrified, including Saul, who was supposed to be a great military leader. But David faced the giant with a slingshot and uh, a couple of rocks. What about Noah? Noah stepped out in faith and built the ark, even though he was living in a desert and it had never rained before. Actually, Noah didn't even know what rain was. But he obediently stepped out on God's word. And then we have the people of Israel, the children of God. They stepped out in faith and passed through the Red Sea on dry land when the Egyptians were trying to follow them and kill them. And God called the waters back into place and the Egyptians were stopped. Peter stepped out in faith and walked on water because Jesus said, come. And I know Peter's triumph was short-lived, but he did attempt a great step of faith. And you know, that pleases God, simply that we are willing to attempt it. Do I have that kind of faith? Do you have that kind of faith? A faith that steps out on nothing but God's word. A faith that doesn't, I don't know, seem to make any sense. A, a faith that goes against all human logic. Because if we can have faith like that, I believe we will see God do great things in our lives and amongst us. But are we more like the disciples who stayed in the boat when Peter got out? You know, any one of them could have stepped out of the boat and onto the water, but I guess they didn't believe it was possible. Even though Jesus was standing there on the water right in front of them. Or maybe they believed it was possible but they did not believe enough to step out of the boat themselves. What I mean by that is I have to confess that's the way I am far too often myself. I believe God can do great things, but I'm just not that confident that he can do great things through me. So I guess I'm more like the disciples who sat back and gave it a lot of thought first. And there's a point, isn't it? Because sometimes we think things through too much. And when we do that, yeah, we examine all the obstacles and, you know, we start to work out whether or not it's possible or not. Uh, and of course, that in the end can lead us doing God a big disservice because nothing is too difficult for him. So I, I truly admire men like Peter, like Abraham, like Noah, like David, who stepped out on nothing but the word of God. But isn't that what God is calling us to do in 2023? This new year, if God calls us to do something that's beyond our practical ability, our physical ability, beyond our financial ability, beyond our wildest imaginations, then we need to attempt to step out in faith. And if the going gets tough, don't forget, God is with us. Have a very happy and faith-filled New Year.
Well, let's turn our eyes upon Jesus in 2023 and let's step out in faith and attempt great things for him. Loving God, at this beginning of another new year, we do praise you, conscious that you have watched over us in the years gone by. We praise you for the countless ways we have experienced your love. We praise you that you have blessed us so much in the past and have helped us to achieve and accomplish so many things. And you have helped us to survive many others. The truth is, living God, you have always been by our sides, your love constantly surrounding us, your hand supporting us, whatever we were called to face. And so we ask that now you would grant your blessing on our days ahead. Help us to make the most of the opportunities that lie before us, to live each day to the full and to stay faithful to you through good and bad, serving Jesus in all that we do. You have blessed us so much in the past. Teach us to trust you now for the future. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to join with this New Year special. I hope to see you online with our pause for thought on a regular basis. Hope to see you very soon or maybe live in person at South Berlin Baptist Church. Who knows? Check out all that's going on www.slbc.org.uk. Be great to meet you. But I do wish you a very, very happy New Year. Stay safe and God bless you.